Welcome back guys. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to go over my um, ADFS certificate update script. And I'm going to go ahead and start off with uh, bringing up my... Showing you what it looks like right now. So let's say I go to portal.office.com and I try to log in. Using any of my federated domain. It redirects me to my ADFS server. And as you can see, I get a certificate warning. I'm just going to go ahead and hit continue. And you can see here I have a certificate error. If I click on that and say view, the reason why I have a certificate error is because this certificate is really invalid. It's issued by my internal CA, which is not validated externally. Uh, <coughs> so the script I created is going to go ahead and update my EDFS environment and also um, update my federated domains. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into my EDFS server. And then I'll bring up the uh, EDFS console. And you notice know, this certificates here, just uh, keep track of that. This one here and this one here and here. This is the ones I'm going to update all these three. All right, minimize, oops. So I uh, already created, I uh, already have the script. So to run the script, I need to start my uh, PowerShell as an administrator. So the script and the certificate are located in my C temp. And the script is ADFS satupdate.ps1. Perfect. And let's see what I have. So for the first um, parameter there, I have a certificate path, which is asking for the uh, the path to the uh, certificate. In this case, it's in the same folder. And that is it. That's uh, my certificate. That is um, it's my certificate with a private key from a trusted from an external trusted CA, so, and then, what else does it need, okay, um, this switch um, is, is, uh, is in there if I want to update my um, signing and decrypting certificate, and I do, because in my environment, I use the same uh, certificate for all three ADFS certificates. And this switch is if I want to update uh, Microsoft Online Service. Uh, this is to update my federated domain in Office 365, and I want to do that. And the last switch is uh, if I want to update my Exchange environment. Um, in my case, I also want to do that because I have uh, the federated service with my Exchange environment also. So with all those parameters, let me see if I need anything else. Nope, nothing else. So I'll just go ahead and press enter. Ask me for the password from my certificate. And then it will ask me for the credentials for my global admin account in Office 365. Let's go ahead and put that in there. And that's all you need to do. Just sit back and let the script do it work.
Okay. Uh, so once it's done, let me just go over briefly what if you can. Uh, there's a uh, information all throughout the script, so you can see what it's been doing. So let's jump back out to uh, external server and try to browse through that and see what we get. So gonna close this browser, open up a new one, and I'm gonna go to portal.office.com and I do the same thing see it redirects me to the same page but this time no certificate error and if I check my certificate it has been updated to the uh, the issue issued by here you see it's a uh, public trusted CA so that's why I'm not getting any errors and if I jump back into my ADFS server bring up my ADFS console refresh you notice the old certificate is gone and all I have is these new certificates here and basically the script has done all the work for me uh, let me go ahead and uh, bring up that script again so we can actually dissect it a little bit. So it's a little bit long. <laughs> uh, it's 142 lines, but <clears throat> 142 lines saves you a lot of headaches. Um, so, up here. Uh, Defining my parameters. Next line down here, line 14. I'm actually silencing any um, errors because I'm doing my um, validation check within the script, so I don't want to see any partial errors. Um, <clears throat> so then the work starts. So here I have it um, asks for the password for the uh, the certificates because since it's a certificate with a private key, it does need a password. And I get that password and I store it so it as a secure string. Here I create a variable called new certs and then I import uh, the private key to my uh, local machine store and make it executable. Okay, next step here. Next step here, I validate that the cert was actually. Uh, um, <coughs> imported. Um, the reason for this is because some certs um, sometimes it's not imported correctly so I don't want it to go any further if, it has, if the import failed. So if for example the import failed you get this notification here. Script aborted, oh sorry, script aborted certificate not installed correctly on the machine. Now if it does pass minimize all these ones. Now if it does pass it will then check for um, if the uh, update MSO online is present. If that switch is present then it will ask for your credential for your Office 365 environment and then it will store it. Oh then it will connect actually. It will store it then use it to connect. Uh, once it's done that Oops. Yep. So once it's done that, it will, it will move down to uh, setting the certificate as the uh, service communication certificate in the ADFS. It sets that up. And then it's also set it up as an ADFS. Uh, SSL certificates. Now, sometimes that process fails. So, it also needs to validate that because the site might install the machine okay, but the site might not be valid for use of ADFS service. So, after I set it up here, it's going to go ahead and validate that that site is actually useful, that that site can be used. And if the site is used, it goes ahead and updates the signing and the crypting certificate if that switch is present
which is this portion here. Okay, then once you update those, um, since it's a uh, since you updated the uh, uh, the signing and the decryption, it validates to see if the password, the username and password you provided for Office 365, is indeed valid. Whether the connection was made. Since I've uh, silenced all the errors up here, you need to do validation yourself. So it checks and see if there's a company display name. If there's no, if there's a company display name, it means that it connected okay. Uh, so if there's no company display name, it means it did not connect okay. And then it will give you this message down here. If there is one, that means it connected okay. Then it would store all this information in a function called update msol. It wouldn't run it at that time, it would just store the information. And then it will also store all the information for the update uh, exchange in a function here. Then they go, so it'll go ahead and uh, restart the ADFS service on the machine that we're on. And this script needs to be run from the primary ADFS server. So once that is done and it's the, it's done the restart it will now check this is something that is, is going to be um, unique for every environment which is why scripts needs to be created for your environment specifically one size fits all it's not always a good thing um, in my case I have a format for my ADFS server even though I only have one and this is the naming convention so check 80 computers check for all the um, the servers with that naming co uh, convention. Then once it gets the list, the names, it will then remove the current primary ADFS server that we're on because we've already restarted the service on that one. Then the, whatever is left in the list, it will run a uh, invoke a command to restart the ADFS services on that server. If there's no server left after removing the primary uh, ADFS server, it will give you this message telling you that um, the uh, primary ADFS server has been updated. There's no other ADFS server in the environment. And then that's it for the, uh, uh, the ADFS certificates. And then it will move on to running the uh, update. Microsoft Online or MSOL and then we also run the function update exchange server and that is how you get what I have in my script here okay I also have this um, uh, this switch I put in there for the update Microsoft update exchange uh, this is because I have an uh, like I mentioned before the same ADFS server is also doing authentication for my exchange environment which means this needs to be updated there but this is I haven't yet incorporated the connection to exchange to run that script but uh, you can just copy this out jump in your exchange uh, any exchange server on your exchange environment and run that and then reset the IS server on the CAS and you should be fine Alright, thank you for watching. Have a great day.